The real DBAs don't use auto extend, they know what's going on. Space calculations. Here's the question that came in. I need to create some new indexes on some of the larger tables in our application. Normally I just let auto extend do its thing, but we're running tight on storage. Is there any way of knowing how much space the index will take? And I, I want to stress first, I'm a big fan of auto extend. I hate this concept of, oh no, oh, you know, real DBAs don't use auto extend. They know what's going on. Auto extend save you from outages. Your customers don't care if you're a smart DBA, they care if your system is up and running. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of auto extend. Use it to avoid outages. That's our job as administrators on systems. Anyone that's been in my office hours will know that like a broken record, I talk about having data guard, not necessarily for DR, but the ability to have a copy of your production system that you can do whatever you want with using snapshot standby. So I will continue to stress, Here's another perfect example of why you would have a data guard copy of your production system. Open up a snapshot standby, create the index in there, and you have an exact idea of how much space will be required. You know exactly because you actually did it. For this particular person, they say they're tight on space. Let's assume they're tight on space everywhere on all their systems. Seems an interesting one. But either way, let's assume data guard is not an option for them. So we're gonna cheat here. We're gonna actually create some indexes so we know how big they are and then we'll see how our estimates are good in terms of aligning to the reality. So I'm gonna create a table called big tab here. It's, what is it, 30 copies of DBA objects. And I'm gonna put a couple of indexes on. One on object ID because that's relatively unique. Um, in fact, it is unique. And one on the owner, which is a rep repeated column, just to make sure we've got some differences here. Now we know, we can actually see exactly how big they are. Those two indexes are about 43 megabytes and 45 megabytes in size. They'll occupy slightly more space in the database because of we round extent sizes to the you know, certain megabyte ranges, et cetera. But we can see 43, 45 megabytes is roughly there. Assuming we hadn't created them, could we actually come up with an estimate that gets close to this so we have no in advance what the estimate will be? So here's the first one, which is the easiest to run. And that is, if you do an explain plan on a create index command, you can actually get the output from that. It doesn't actually create the index. You can do explain plan on a lot of DDLs, believe it or not. So look at the explain plan output. It says, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm going to do. We don't care, but this is the great note. It says the estimated index size is 60 megabytes. And that was for the object ID index. So it's a bit inflated. You know, it was actually 40, what, 43 megabytes, but I would rather have an overestimate than an underestimate, but came back with that 60 megabytes, which is in the ballpark. Let's do the same thing for the owner one, just to make sure that the non-unique sort of characteristics don't impact things. It also comes out at 60 megabytes. So once again, in the same ballpark of that 45 megabyte index. So I would say this is you know, a, a good starting point. Let's now create a third index on this table called on the column called default collation. If I look at the size of this index, it's a lot smaller. The reason it's a lot smaller is out of the two and a half million rows in this table, the vast majority of them are actually null. And as we know, uh, entirely null values are not indexed as index keys. So that's why this index is probably a third the size of the others. Only a third of the rows are not null. Let's do explain plan for create index on that one. And here's where things get very disappointing. It looks like the explain plan option for creating an index uses some hard-coded stats based on the size of the table and comes up with that, it doesn't look at obviously nulls because 60 megabytes, that's now fourfold wrong. It's good that it's an overestimate, but let's face it, we, don't have, we, we rapidly have lost faith now in this because the moment we have nulls in there, then we've got a problem. Let's look at our second option now. Way back in Oracle 9, I think, 9.2, we created this utility in DBMS space, create index cost. Same thing, you pass in your DDL and it returns you how much space it'll thinks it'll use and how much it'll allocate in terms of extents. We're only interested in used, divide it by megabytes and it says 12 megabytes for that default collation index. Once again, it's slightly under, but it's a reasonably good estimate. 12 megabytes out of 17, no, that, that's pretty good. Try it again for the object I eat index, which we know is 43 megabytes. Oh dear, that came out as 12 megabytes as well as did the owner one. 
So unfortunately, I think we can discount DBMS space as a useful utility because it looked good for a second, but it's going to dramatically underestimate. So explain plan maybe overestimates and has some problems with nulls. DBMS space looks like it just is plain wrong. What do we do? Well, we can go back to first principles. And you know, when in doubt, go back to you know, good old mathematics. We know there's what, 2.5 million rows in the table. And we can actually get the number of nulls for each of the columns. There's none for the owner none for, and 300 for the object ID. And we can get the average column length. With those two pieces of information, I can write a simple join to give me an estimate. I've got percent free of 10, so 10% of the index won't be used. I've got around about 200 bytes of overhead in an index leaf block for things like um, the various headers, ITLs, etc. That's about 4% of a block, so about 4%. I take the number of rows minus the number of nulls to take into account null values as well. The average column length is the average value in each index key, plus the row ID that goes in every index key, plus the row index offset, plus a lock byte. If I do that, I get an estimate of almost, well, well, 43 and 45, I got 41 and 38. That's not too bad. Let's try it with our big index as well, the number third one, which was the default collation. And it came out at eight megabytes. Well, that's disappointing. These two are pretty close, but this one was, I think, was 17 or 16 megabytes. This one's come out half wrong. That's not such a good thing. Let's explore why. The stats I was using was the average column length because that's what I think will be the average size of an index key. For this column, the average column length is set at five. That's what the stats say. However, if I actually do a calculation, what is the genuine average length? It's 14. So where does five come from? Five is the average length across the entire table. Two thirds of those values are null, which are treated as zero, which is why the value is rounded down to five. On average, across the whole table, this column consumes five bytes per row on average. For the rows where it's actually there, it's actually 14 bytes long. So that's the genuine actual length of my index keys. So if I plug that into my formula, I actually get much closer to my real number of 16 megabytes. So using some first principles, this is probably the best way of getting a reasonably close estimate. Did I mention data guard? Yes, use your snapshot standby to genuinely get an estimate to get the exact result. And that's the perfect estimating tool. Another great use for snapshot standby and having data guard on every single database.